Hello again, and welcome back to Educator.com's Introduction to PHP course. In today's lesson, we're going to be talking about user-defined functions with variable length parameter lists. So specifically, we're going to be talking about uh, what variable length parameter lists are and how you can define functions that have variable length parameter lists. And then we're also going to uh, talk about some uh, built-in functions to PHP that relate to uh, finding out the types of different variables. And that's something that is often used with um, variable variable length parameter list functions. Uh, so user-defined functions in PHP are, are permitted to accept uh, any number of parameters. The functions we've worked with before have had required parameters and optional parameters. Um, and, but all of those are explicitly listed in the function's definition. In a variable length parameter list function, uh, you can supply uh, arguments or parameters to the function uh, that aren't even defined in the list, whether required or optional. PHP provides a couple of built-in functions uh, for being able to uh, deal with these types of functions, uh, and they're only in user-defined functions. Uh, there's one called func funcNumArgs, which basically is a, a function that returns the number of arguments that were uh, input to a particular function. Uh, function get arg, um, which is, allows you to get the value of a particular argument that was passed in. And then func function get args, which basically returns an array of, an index array of all of the uh, function arguments that were passed to a particular user-defined function. Uh, now one thing to note is that um, these functions interpret uh, the argument list as being zero indexed, just like an array, meaning that they treat the fir first argument as being argument zero rather than argument one. So it works kind of just like arrays. So if we take a look at a uh, file called variableparams.php, uh, created a function here called add. And as you can see, it has no, <clears throat> it has no par defined parameters, it has no parameter list. Uh, but in fact, it actually can accept multiple parameters. And what this function does is it takes as, as many integer parameters you provide, or numeric parameters you provide to it, it's just going to add them all up, however many you provide, and then return the sum. So for example, um, here we uh, call the function add one, which means we're providing the one uh, one argument to it, and it's the number one. So what's going to happen is when we enter the function, uh, we set up a sum variable, which we just set equal to zero. And then what we do is we use a for loop uh, to loop over all of the arguments provided uh, to the function. Uh, so we set i equal to zero, which is our counter. Um, and then we say as long as i is less than the number of arguments, uh, go ahead and evaluate the loop. And the loop evaluates by just cumulatively adding um, each parameter to the, the value of each parameter to this sum variable. And the way it does that is you can see here we've made use of the, uh, the built-in function, function get arg. Um, and what we do is we pass it the, um, we pass it the, ar the number of the argument that we want to get. And in this case, um, for the first time through this loop, it's going to be zero. And that's because, uh, as mentioned, uh, in an argument list, the first argument is considered by these functions to be zero. So this is going to say the first time this loop goes through, uh, it's going to say, um, get me the argument, argument at index zero, which is going to be the first argument, and add it to the sum. It's going to do that for each of these arguments. Once it reaches the end of the number of arguments that we have, or it's, it's looped over all of the arguments, it's going to exit. In this case, it's only going to loop through one time because we've only provided uh, one variable to it. Um, so it's going to be zero. Then when the loop it, uh, finishes, it's going to increment to one. Um, and one is not going to be less than one, which is the number of arguments, so it will end. So if we run this function, excuse me, run this uh, script, we can see that sum equals one when we pass it one parameter with the value one. Now let's say we want to add multiple numbers, one, two, and three. Uh, now, again, this function doesn't have a specified parameter list. It says it accepts three functions but it has the built-in uh, capability using these uh, built-in functions from PHP, the function num args and function get arg, uh, to be able to add up all of these together. So the result should be six, and when we reload our page, we can see that that's the result. And you can sort of do that indefinitely. You, know, add it, you can add as many arguments as you want. If we add a four and a five, it should sum up to 15. And as we see, that's gonna be the case. Uh, the other thing to notice is that actually if we don't provide it any arguments, that's still going to work. Um, when we enter it, sum is going to be equal to zero. Uh, we're going to set the counter equal to zero, and we're going to say as long as i is less than the number of function arguments, we're going to execute the loop. Well, the number of function arguments is zero, 
zero is not less than zero, so this is never going to get executed, so it's just going to return the sum, which is going to be uh, the default value, or the, its initial value, which is zero. So when we run this, we should get sum equals zero. And so that's an example of you don't actually even have to uh, pass parameters to uh, uh, functions that accept variable length parameters, parameter list. Um, as far as parameter, uh, variable length parameter lists go, um, you can also use uh, supply variable, a variable number of arguments to a function that actually has uh, a defined parameter list. So like the functions we've worked with before where we have uh, required or optional parameters, you can also supply additional, um, op additional parameters on top of that, uh, additional um, uh, basically function arguments. And then for uh, the thing to note is that for those um, arguments that you've actually already defined uh, uh, parameters for, for example, let's say we call the first one required one, the second one required two, you can access those parameter values or the, the values passed in for those parameters when you call the function um, via the variable names that you give them. So for example, required one or required two, or you can access them via the built-in functions um, for dealing with variable length parameter lists. So for example, even though the first parameter might be called required one in our um, function definition, uh, we can also access that with uh, the function get arg uh, with the uh, value zero because that's going to say give me the value of the first argument. So let's take a look at uh, how this works in a script called variable params two. Um, and here we've just kind of updated the function add and we've actually had it so that it requires two arguments. It requires um, an op1 and an op2. And basically what it does is, is uh, it takes those two arguments and adds them together. Then it provides the additional functionality that you can supply to any other number of arguments, and it's going to add that to the total of op1 and op2. Uh, but these first two arguments are required, and if you don't supply them to the function, you're going to get an error from PHP. Now, as you can see here, one thing to note is that uh, when we loop over all of the extra, quote unquote, extra arguments provided to the function, um, all of those, uh, you know, variable length parameters, um, we actually start our loop counter at two. Uh, because if we started at zero, it would, because we've already added op one and op two to each other, if we started at zero, it would re-add them again and our sum would be incorrect. Uh, so here we actually started at two and says, I want to add up, uh, add in addition to op one and op two, any uh, additional arguments from the third argument on. So for example, if we pass it the two required parameters, 100 and 1, we should get the sum 101. If we load the page, that's actually what we get. Now if we were to call it, for example, with just one parameter, because they're listed as a required parameter, we're going to get a, a, a warning from PHP. And it's going to say missing argument uh, for missing argument 2 for add. So let's go back and correct that. And now let's add some additional arguments, two, three, four, which would give us uh, the sum 110. And so when we go and reload the page, we should see that our sum equals 110. And so the thing to note here is that the first two arguments are, are added up um, by accessing them using their defined names, uh, their defined parameter names, op1 and op2, which were defined in the function definition. But as mentioned on the slide, you can actually um, access them using this function get arg, uh, the function function get arg as well. So actually, we could actually cancel this out here. And even though these are defined parameters, we don't actually have to access them using their variable names given. We can set sum equal to one and have the content of this loop be the same as it was before, uh, as in add with no parameters, no required parameters. Here we have two required parameters. Um, but it's still going to work with the same code even though we're not accessing op1 and op2 using those variable names. And so when we run this function again, it's still going to give us 101, excuse me, 110. And we can see that when it reloads, that's exactly what happens. And uh, just make sure let's remove one of these, couple of these parameters so we get 103. 100, 103. So you can see that the function still works. So they're actually um, for... Uh, Function for parameters that are defined, uh, you can actually access them uh, using the function get arg um, function, or you can access access them directly by calling them by their variable name that you define in the parameter list.